Okay, if you know anything at all about me and my style of play, you'll understand that I'm a firm believer in the small ball approach rather than the more risky all-in approach to the game. Similar to a game like baseball, small ball as it relates to poker, it's more of a grind it out style that while very aggressive doesn't exactly rely on the big home run. Instead, the small ball approach looks to steadily increase your chip count in no limit tournaments while looking to really avoid any big risks in marginal situations. Before I continue, it wouldn't be fair of me to not add the following disclaimer. Small ball is an extremely advanced strategy and should only be used by players with a decent amount of experience. See, the reason that's true is because when you're using small ball as a tactic, you'll have to depend heavily on your hand reading skills since it entails playing a lot of hands and being faced with even more difficult decisions. Phil Ivey, Phil Hellmuth, myself, The Grinder, Eric Lindgren, Gus Hansen, and a slew of other top pros, they all use a small ball approach, and it's hardly a coincidence. The advice I'd give a beginning player is precisely the opposite of the advice I'd give an advanced player. Beginning players should stick to the home run ball by playing big bet poker with all-in bets when necessary. While that's not the optimal strategy, it's definitely going to help them neutralize a pro's advantage over them. Think about that for a minute. Say, say a rookie player just keeps going all-in every hand. Now that takes all the play away from the pro. The pro is now nothing more than a player waiting for a good hand. See, what a small ball pro wants to do is he wants to see a lot of flops cheaply so he can outplay novice players after the flop. So what's the real difference? Okay, well, the major difference between the beginning player and the uh, more advanced player who's going to use small ball is basically the amount they're going to raise before the flop. As a general rule, the beginning player should look to make large raises before the flop. If the blinds are 400, 800 with an ante, the home run hitting beginning player should be raising to as much as 4,000. There's no good reason to really change the raising amounts based on your cards, so if you start with 4,000, stick to 4,000. In fact, by raising the same amount with aces as you do with ace-10, you give away less information to your opponents. Conversely, a small ball player, he might raise the pot to anything from 2,000 to 2,400. While the beginning player is risking 4,000 when 2,100, laying about 2 to 1 odds on the hand, the small ball player, he's getting much better value, getting about even money on the steal. Another thing to think about, of course, is that the home run hitter won't get as much action as a small ball player will. The player in the big blind, for example, would have to call an additional 3,200 to see the flop against the home run hitter, while against a small ball player, he's only going to have to call 1,200 more and get 3 to 1 odds in that case. That is the essential difference in what makes the home run hitting style much easier to play. You simply won't have to make as many decisions after the flop. Now, the small ball player, he desperately wants to see a lot of flops and force his opponent into making difficult decisions. The very best small ball players make it look like controlled chaos, seemingly involved in every hand and always keeping their opponents on their heels. If I could use one more sports analogy, I'd look to boxing. Think of small ball as a style that continually throws jabs while always keeping your guard up. The goal is to frustrate your opponent until he opens up his chin and makes a big, big mistake. That's when you sock it to him with a big uppercut. (laughs) Ha ha ha.